Hi guys, it's uh, Mr. Bennett. We're going to talk about video 1-4 now. Topic is uh, numbers and uncertainty. So the first topic we have today is uh, the scientific notation. Scientific notation is a method for, for really rewriting very large or very small numbers in a way that's more convenient. So what I mean by very large would be something like 45,000. Okay, kind of big, you know, might give people a little bit of trouble. Or if you talk about really small numbers, it could be something like 0.000098. Okay, again, pretty small, and that's a decimal. Okay, so pretty small, these zeros might give, this, this number actually might scare people more than the 45,000. Now with scientific notation, what we do is we take that number and we're gonna rearrange it so there's only one number to the left of the decimal. And when I say that there's only one number, what I really mean is that there's one non-zero number. So a number other than zero in front of the decimal. Everything else is behind the decimal. So in the case of 45,000, right, what we've done is we've taken the decimal, which is right here, we've moved it one, two, three, four spots to the left, okay? So now it's right here, and we've created 4.5, okay? Now, all this value, we just moved the decimal four spots to the left, that value we need to, we need to keep, we need to show it some way. So that's what this stuff is over here, this times 10 to the n. This is gonna account for that value that we've essentially pulled out by moving the decimal to the left. So we do times 10 to the n, and what the n does, this is a number that's gonna show how many times you have moved the decimal over. So in this case, we moved it one, two, three, four spots. So we're gonna change n to four, okay? Now, we moved it to the left, right? Well, if you move the decimal to the right, this exponent has to be negative. But since we moved it to the left, this decimal, or exponent rather, is gonna be positive, okay? Let me show you the other example. If we take 0 0.000098, okay, very small number, okay, same deal, might have some trouble with this, so let's turn it into scientific notation. Here's our decimal. We move it one, two, three, four, five spots to the right, okay? That's gonna give us 9.8 times 10 and now we need our little exponent. So we moved it one, two, three, four, five spots to the right. So n is gonna be five, and we moved it to the right, so that means that the exponent has to be negative. So it's gonna be 9.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So there's different ways of remembering this. My trick was always that uh, it's gonna be a negative exponent if the number that you are reducing or putting into scientific notation is less than one. Okay, so if it's a, basically if it's a decimal like this. Uh, if it's a really big number, like in the case of 45,000, so basically the number is greater than one, then it will be positive, okay? Meaning the exponent will be positive, like this one. So here's some other examples. Um, basically they're just all examples of power of 10. So here we have 0 0.01, and to put that in scientific notation, we move the decimal one, two spots to the right, that means a negative exponent, and we moved it two spots, so it's one times 10 to the negative second. Here's point one. Point one, we have to move the decimal one spot to the right, okay? That gives us one, so one times 10 to the negative one, because we moved it one spot to the right. For a thousand, the decimal's right here, we have to move the decimal one, two, three spots to the left, so that's three spots, so the exponent is three. Since we went to the left, and a thousand is much greater than one, it's a positive three. That's scientific notation. Let's do a little bit of practice. So our first number is 456. All right, 456, the decimal's right here. Just because the decimal isn't there doesn't mean that uh, it's not there. So just draw it in. We need to move it one, two spots to the left, right? So that means our exponent's gonna be two. We moved left plus 456 is much greater than one, so it's positive, okay? And you can put the positive sign there or you can just leave it as is. Uh, really, you just need a negative if it's going to be negative. Uh, so our next example is 0 0.0567. All right, this number is much less than 1, so it's going to have a negative exponent. Uh, here's our, de our decimal point. So we go 1, 2 spots to the right. That's going to give us 5.67 times 10. Move the decimal 2 spots, so that's an exponent of 2. And as I said, we're going to the right, and it's less than 1, so it's a negative exponent. Okay, there's our negative. Third example, 3,940. Decimal, again, is hidden, so we draw it in. We go one, two, three spots to the left. That's gonna give us 3.94 times 10. 
we moved it three spots to the left, so that's an exponent of three, and we went left, so it's positive. Another way of thinking of it is this is much greater than one, so it's positive. Okay, that is scientific notation. Our next topic is accuracy and precision. Accuracy looks at how close you are to the true value. So in this case, they're shooting for the bullseye. There's some shots that are pretty close to the bullseye. In fact, they're touching it. Okay. Precision, on the other hand, is how often you can reproduce what you did. So in this case, this person reproduced pretty much the same shot four times in a row, very tightly clumped together, pretty much in the same area of the target. We wouldn't say that this is accurate because it's not near the center, but this is precise. Whereas over here, we would say this is accurate because they hit the center. However, these are not precise because they went up and down and left and right. Okay, so if someone was accurate and precise, you would see lots of bullets right in the middle. Okay, so the way I remember it is accuracy, the AC, is really short for actual. So if you are having really good accuracy, then you're close to the actual value or the true value. And what accuracy is, is primarily controlled by is your equipment. So the better your equipment, the more accurate your equipment, uh, the better your accuracy improves. So this is why uh, we buy really expensive glassware that's calibrated for measurements. This is why we buy really uh, expensive scales for uh, measuring mass. Uh, if you want to apply it to something else, this is why golfers spend huge amounts of money on these carbon crafted, uh, carbon fiber crafted laser cut golf clubs that are insanely accurate. Okay, lots of money on their, uh, basically their, their equipment. In science, the term we use for this is, is uh, significant figures. Sometimes it gets referred to as sig figs. Uh, basically what it says is that you're only as accurate as your least accurate measuring tool. So you can have a $50,000 scale, you can have you know, crazy tools in your laboratory, spend thousands and thousands of dollars, but if you use a really, really cheap graduated cylinder that's not very accurate, basically you've wasted your money because you're only as accurate as your least accurate measuring tool. Precision, on the other hand, when I think of precision, the PR I think of as being the PR in reproducible. So precision is all about how reproducible your measurement is. And that's not so much about your equipment. Precision is about your technique. So if you can do the same movements in the same way every single time, then you have great technique. And whatever you do will be reproducible over and over and over again. So you want good technique so that what you do will continue over and over again, and then you get some accurate equipment, and you get some really good numbers. Now, if we take accuracy and precision, we put them together, okay? So think of it as like accuracy plus precision. We add them together, they account for a good part of something that we call percent error. And what percent error is, it's basically in a lab, when you're doing measurements or in science, it's how far away your measurement is from the true value. Okay, which is important to understand because if you're trying to figure something out or discover something, you need to know how far you are from the real numbers. So to calculate this, what we do is we take the theoretical value, the number that we think we need to get to, okay, the, the number, the ideal number. We subtract our experimental value. Okay, so the number that we actually get in the experiment. Okay, so we take those. We do that first, so I'm putting parentheses around it. Then we take our theoretical value again, so that's the ideal value. Okay, we have this number, we divide it by the theoretical value, and then we multiply it times 100%. And that will give us our percent error. Let me show you what I mean. Here's an example. You're supposed to, uh, in this laboratory, or in this lab, you're supposed to make 100 grams of sodium chloride, also known as table salt. However, you're only able to make 80 grams. What is your percent error? So the first thing I do when I see these problems is identify what's the theoretical and what is the experimental. You were supposed to make 100 grams. So that's the ideal, right? So that would be theoretical. I'm just going to label that with a T. However, in the laboratory, you're only able to produce 80 grams. So that's what you actually made, right? 80 grams. So we'd call that the experimental. Sometimes people have trouble with this whole theoretical idea. So another way of thinking of theoretical is that it is the ideal or true value, okay? So if you're trying to figure it out, think of it as like, this is the dream. This is what you want. This is what you got, okay? So shorthand formula, it's theoretical minus experimental over theoretical times 100%. So let's plug the numbers in. 100 grams 
right? Minus 80 grams, because that's theoretical, minus experimental, okay? Then on the bottom, theoretical again, so 100 grams times 100%, okay? Uh, let's do some uh, math here. So we do this first, because inside the parentheses, so 100 minus 80 is gonna give us 20 grams, okay? Then uh, we can do a couple different things here. Uh, notice it's grams over grams, so grams are gonna cancel out, right? Uh, and then we have 100 down here, we have 100 over here, so technically we can cancel these out. This, this becomes one, this becomes one. So we're left with 20 times 1%, or our percent error is 20%, okay? Another example for you, a student measures out 92 milliliters of acid when the lab calls for 100 milliliters. What is the percent error? Well, let's identify again what theoretical and experimental are. In this case, it says the student measures out. So that says that it did happen. That happened in the experiment. So I would say the 92 milliliters is the experimental value. And it says the lab calls for 100 milliliters. So that's the value that they were shooting for. That's the theoretical value. Now we want to know the percent error. So again, shorthand formula, theoretical minus experimental, all over theoretical times 100%. All right, that's your setup. We've identified theoretical, we've identified experimental. Plug them in, see what you can get for your answer, and I'll tell you if you got it right tomorrow. All right, go ahead and do your whisk, and we'll see you in the morning.